A friend damaged one of the letters in a set of router guides. They don't sell single letters, so he asked me if I could print him a new one. And I said, of course. This is probably a better project for a laser cutter, but I don't have a laser cutter. I have a 3D printer. So every project's a 3D printer project. After scanning it, I put it into Photoshop and fixed the damaged area. I simply painted in the missing spot with black. And since this was going to be a one-off print, I didn't worry about making everything perfect. It could be sanded lightly around the edges to fit the other stencils perfectly. After saving the file as a JPEG, the next thing I did was to convert it to an SVG using Online Convert. Once the image is converted to an SVG, I download it and save it to my computer. An open SVG to STL program. Click Select and then find the file that you just made in the Convert program. Then click Upload. And the thickness doesn't really matter here, but I just use the default of 5 millimeters. And then press Convert. This will convert the SVG file into an STL file for a three-dimensional object. Now I have a 3D object that's 5 millimeters thick. I download that and save it. Next, using SketchUp, I import the STL that we just made. When objects are imported this way, they often have hundreds or thousands of extra faces. These can be cleaned up using the cleanup extension. And then you have a nice clean looking object. Now I triple click on it to select everything. And then I make it in a group, which was totally unnecessary. I just wanted to move it over a little bit so I could draw a line along the green axis. I press the shift key to constrain the line and then I can go to the top edge of the object. Next, using the tape measure, I measure the line. You can see it's almost 600 millimeters, but I type in 111.6, which is the size the object needs to be when it's finished. And it gives me the option to resize, and I choose yes. Then it can erase the line that I used as a guide. Then I check the height to make sure that it's pretty close. And because of the inaccuracy of the edges of the original, it's a little bit off, but it's really close. It needs to be 2.3 millimeters thick to match the original router guides. I start pulling a line up from the bottom and type in 2.3 and enter. This will give me a guide to snap to when I use the push-pull tool. And then I remember that it's a group, so I need to explode it or edit it as a group. So using the push-pull tool, I grab the top and pull it up to the 2.3 millimeter line. And then I double check it to make sure I got it right. Then I look for any of the areas that are really bad that need to be cleaned up, like the inside corner of one of the dovetails. It's not real critical because I can just sand it or file it a little bit since I just need one of these. 
If I were designing from scratch, I would carefully measure the angles and draw it correctly. I may do that later just so I have a set. I could have a blank stencil that I could put any of the letters on. I do a quick cleanup on a couple of the corners and edges, but I don't spend a lot of time on this. When I feel it's good enough, I check it with the Solid Inspector tool to make sure it's a solid 3D printable object. In this case, it finds some internal faces where I had fixed a couple of the areas, but it left an inside edge. You can see where they are by using the X-ray tool. And sometimes Solid Inspector can fix it for you. In this case, it's just a matter of erasing those inside faces. Then I like to use the cleanup extension to make sure that there's no extra faces. And then the solid inspector one more time to make sure I didn't mess something up fixing it. And finally, save it and then export the STL to, to make it ready to print. I'm not going to bore you with the whole print. All of the layers are essentially the same as this first one. This project is still probably better suited for a laser cutter, but it worked and it replaced the one damaged router guide and is able to continue using the set without having to buy all of it just for the one piece. The black one in the middle is an original, undamaged router guide.